You're listening to Power Producers Shop Talk, where we are refining and redefining the sales game by equipping you with the tools you need to differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Well, it's like when we audit the mod with Magic and give them the action items that they're going to use to lower their total cost of risk. Tactical skills that will help you provide deliverable value to your clients and prospects. Technology is not an expense. It's an investment. Look at what ThinkHR has done for our clients and even our team. It's an amazing product, and I'm so thankful we have that. And action items that you can provide to take your prospects and clients to the next level. Things are changing for us in 2021. Not all big business anymore. Now that we have Cover Wallet on our team, it's amazing that we're going to be able to write small business profitably. This is Power Producer Shop Talk. Production redefined. Are you ready to feel the power? What is going on, Power Producers Nation? It's Shop Talk Friday, and today we're going to talk about something that everybody probably should do when things get a little stale. We're going to talk about telemarketing tweaks, right? We had a Mm. great run with Marvin. And then, you know, we're getting excited because appointments are booked and appointments are booked. And then those Mm -hmm. calls happen and people aren't there. And we had to course correct a little bit. And then it seemed like we started getting more appointments again and they weren't really what we were looking for. So we had to go back and tweak again. Mm -hmm. And this time you did the tweaking. Yeah. And so That's I want right. you to talk about that a little bit, man, because, uh, you know, you're uh, whatever you did, you're like the frickin Marvin whisperer. <laughs> um, you, you got him on track in a big way. I mean, listen, let me be very, very clear. I'm perfectly fine with Marvin. I have no complaints about Marvin in his telemarketing game. Mm-mm. Papa been smooth since days of underoos. <laughs> I mean, Marvin is like the Filipino Biggie Smalls over there. By the way, I've been waiting for weeks to work that one in. Oh man, um, that was good. But uh, yeah, I mean the the fact of the matter is that every once in a while you got to reinvent yourself a little bit to get yeah. back on track. And so you know, I'd ask you to reach out to him and talk to him and give him a little framework to operate out of. And I think mm-hmm. that probably everybody out there could benefit from hearing this because whatever you told him and and we haven't even really gotten into what you told him not really i just know it worked and and yeah he lightened me up now as long as we could keep his phone working which i just got a message from him again that his phone system doesn't work um it's not ideal for someone who (laughs) literally makes calls all day (laughs) i love paying for his phone not to work let me tell you how much i love it um yeah so i mean with him it was you're right i mean it was it was going good for the first however long and then we kind of hit a little bit of a patch and so i went and listened to um a couple of the calls where he set appointments for me and you know ultimately he set the appointment so obviously that part's good but um there were definitely some things in there where there was like a little bit of dead air and it was just kind of awkward and you're sitting there and you're just like oh god just if you just say this then 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 we'll be good um and it won't you know they won't be as hesitant or um you know whatever in in that situation so the one thing i I didn't want to do is like break his confidence i didn't want to just you know uh you know kind of cut him at the knees and say hey you need to do this 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 and this I wanted to kind you of build, build them up. You got to build rapport with Marvster, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this build, is your first build, break, build, 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 break, build, man. So you're kind of a grizzly character with the beard, you know. <clears throat> you know, by and large, Marvin probably doesn't have the ability to grow substantial facial hair like that. He's very <laughs> probably similar not. to me. Probably not. I don't see a lot of Filipinos with big beards, but, no, uh, but it would at, be awesome if you did. I know. At at any rate, I, you know, I, I wanted him to to know that uh, that it was just kind of like, hey, you know, we appreciate what you got what you've done so far and i think that if we make a few tweaks here and there that we can you know get better you're doing some right you know some some things right because you're setting appointments but we want to make sure they're the right appointments and we want to make sure that um you know we can up that amount or volume that that you're in make you more effective right um it goes back to what you said you know working smarter not harder but um my takeaways from listening to his calls was that he needed to be more direct and kind of tell versus ask so Mm. he would ask a lot of open-ended questions kind of like 
like is that okay um oh, you yeah, know I kind of kind that. of yeah, they kind of like one kind of us that are on there, like trying to talk. You know, open-ended questions are good if you're the salesperson, but you're not trying to do anything but set the appointment there. C- correct. So, I, and and again, the open-ended questions are good with what we do. Like they're good in a first appointment to find out, you know, um, problems that they're having or so forth. But uh, in his situation, he's just trying to set the appointment, and I kind of related it back to when I was selling the office supplies. Like it was a commodity. It was. You know, we were selling on price. We were, it, it, there was no real value add. So like we had to be direct and kind of tell versus ask. So he, I asked him what he was having issues with. And he was like, well, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll call and I'll talk to the, I'll, I'll be trying to get a hold of the decision maker and the gatekeeper will just keep telling me they're not in, they're not in, whatever. So I was like, okay, so here's an example of how you can tell versus ask in that situation. You know, so if, if, if Johnny business owner is, is out, Instead of business owner does nothing but golf and go to happy hour, by the way. Sounds sick, to be honest with you. Uh, But uh, he has a rope hat. I guarantee you he has a rope hat. You got to have a rope hat. Um, But I was like, you can just say something like, okay, I understand that they're out. Uh, They're going to be back in tomorrow, right? Basically ending everything that you say with right. Like, because that makes them say yes or no. So the the answer is either going to be, yeah, they'll be back tomorrow or the they're out for the week. They're on vacation. They'll be back next Tuesday. They're so never coming back. Yeah, they're Don't never coming me. back. Um, but but then the follow up question to that is okay, great. And, and morning is better than afternoon, right? Because if it, if it is, then they'll be like, yeah, mornings are good. If it's not, they're going to be like, mornings are crazy around here. You better to catch them after lunch. But either way, you get the info that you're looking for. Um, so that was the first piece of feedback is just being more direct um, because there would be a lot of kind of, like I said, just awkwardness in the way that he was asking the questions. Um, and then the second thing I told him, I, or, or I asked him, you know, again, what else he's having issues with. I'm like, okay, so that's the gatekeeper. That's one thing. What about when you're with the actual person that you're trying to set the meeting which, with? Like, which, what's by the way, Marvin does not differentiate between the president of the company and the gatekeeper. Listen, people, Marvin sees no color. He sees no gender. He sees no <laughs> title. We are all the same in Marvin's world. Uh, that's that's probably true. Um, but. I, so I was like, okay, you know, so what are the objections that you're getting mostly? And, you know, he said that um, two of them are like, oh, well, we've been with, you know, our agent for a while. And then like the other one was like, maybe, you know, we just, we just renewed or something like that. So I just kind of like wrote those down and, and came back to him. But I was like, okay, so how would you overcome that? And he gave me an answer and it, it didn't really overcome the objection at all. It was just kind of like him talking. Um, so I was like, okay, let's, let's try this. So one of the... Um, one of the things that I learned in, in like, you know, one of my, um, in, in one of my first sales jobs when I was doing the office supplies, so I guess it wasn't one of my first ones, but one of the ones that I like had the most tenure in and was, was there for a while was, um, using feel felt found to overcome objections, which is super simple, but feel felt found, mm-hmm. feel Three felt S. found. That's right. So I was like, the first thing that you need to do is whenever they give you the objection is, is say a power word, something that's going to, um, you know, basically start you off on your rebuttal, but it's not like, it's not a doubt word. It's not something like, um, or, uh, or well, because that immediately just stop for one second. Can I just, when you said start it with a power word, Mm -hmm. all I could think of was Rob Riggle in step brothers. Bam. <laughs> Pow! Yeah. Right. Um, so that would be great because that would totally catch them <laughs> off guard. But um, it kind of just face. like like so like I would always use like perfect or great, you know, whenever I would get an objection because again it kind of like they, they, they're giving you an objection, which is essentially just a way for them to tell you how to close them. It's like here's my issue. If you can solve this issue, then then we'll do business together. But they're not expecting you to to tell them that whatever they just told you is perfect. So by saying perfect and then getting into your objection, they're kind of like, wait a second. And then they're, you know, they're listening. So <laughs> the way feel felt found works is I need just to use that on my wife <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when she yeah. rejects me, you know, <laughs> when I throw the leg over at nine o'clock at night. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. You're going to sleep in my face. T- perfect. <laughs> Listen, Annie, I totally understand how you feel <laughs> and you're tired right now. <laughs> Actually, I've felt the same way in the past, <laughs> but what I found no, but so that's how it works. As you say, I totally understand how you feel because that's relating with them. It's making them feel, it's, it's dropping their guard a little bit. They're like, okay. 
Um, and then, you know, you can, you can get specific with it. He's not going to get specific cause he's not going to know our clients, but if you're on the phone doing this, you can, like, if you're talking to, um, you know, let's say you're in a you know particular niche of business, you can reference another one of your clients that's in that niche of it. Like that, that, that person that you're talking to is probably going to know, or you can do it on a more general level. Like I did with him. I was just like, I, I said, you know, I totally understand how you feel. Most of our clients you know, felt the same way. And then you insert the objection right there. So, um, if the objection was that they had been with their, you know, current agent for a long time, I just told them, you know, Hey, most of our clients felt the same way. They've been, you know, using their current agent, uh, for years and had a relationship with them, but what they found, and then that's where you overcome the objection itself. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so, Dude, so I, far I, I've been doing feel felt found, Without knowing career, it, without even knowing that's what it was, right? Just putting God, a name where to were it. you? Where were you when I was hawking huck, satellite dishes, man? Probably freaking in like perhaps not second grade. Yet. Yeah, it was nineteen ninety one or ninety two. There you go. So I was I was in kindergarten. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and, and then you know, but what they found was that after speaking with us, they were learning some things that they had never heard before, and we were able to have a positive impact on their bottom line. So that's that's the overcoming of the objection part. But then what's most important after that is is going immediately back to the close. And that's what he wasn't doing. And that's what I think a lot of people don't do is they overcome the objection and they just expect the buyer to be like, excellent, let's do business. You yeah. you nailed it. But you've got to you've got to continue to drive that conversation back to where you want it to be, which is to the close. So his close is just to set the appointment for us. So after, I was like, you know, immediately after that, you just need to be like, look, you know, my job is is really simple today, Susie. It's to set a time for one of our advisors to uh, get on a brief call with you, you know, next week to share how we've been able to help, um, you know, other businesses. Shouldn't take more than fifteen minutes. Is Tuesday or Wednesday better for you? And that goes back to telling versus asking, right? Like, I'm not like, hey, you know, we want to get with you next week. You know, when would be a good time? Cause like, it's just an easy opportunity for somebody at that point to be like, oh, I'm pretty busy. Let me just give you a call when we're ready or something like that. Like you completely give, you don't have control of the conversation anymore at that point. So, you know, by saying it, you know, it's, it's, and, and also the, the fifth, like throwing out the whole 15 minutes thing, like a first call doesn't really take too much longer than that. So it's not like we're, you know, misleading them at all. Like if you, if you're on a, if, if you're on a first call for longer than that, it's, it's probably. I don't, I don't know, not a waste of time, but unless you're having like a really deep conversation, in my opinion, the first, the first call shouldn't really take too much longer than that, but that's, that's a separate, separate discussion, I guess. But you know, is Tuesday or Wednesday better for you? Wait for their response. They're going to tell you one of the two, cause you give them something to choose from. It's a yes or no type of situation. Um, and then the, uh, the other area where he was having a little bit of issues was, was the, the asking for the email, um, which should be something, you know, again, just really simple, like, Hey, you know, I, I, um, I'm going to send out a calendar invite to you and the advisor. What's the best email for you? You know, he, he would kind of make it a little bit too, it just seemed weird. It was like, okay. And can I have an email? Like it wasn't, it it wasn't very direct. It wasn't like he, he wasn't wasn't clear as to, yeah, it's not smooth at all. Right. Like when you start asking that, it's like, uh, you know, like, wait a second, this person's gonna, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that, that was pretty much the gist is I, I wanted him to be more direct. Um, I wanted him to use feel felt found because it would give him a framework of how to overcome the objection. Cause he was obviously just kind of like, you know, freewheeling it and he would have some success, but not, you know, it, it just wasn't as crisp as it needed to be. And, and then the biggest part was after that going back to the close to like, Hey, look, I'm my job simple. It's just to get a time scheduled for one of our advisors to give you a call to go over some of the ways we've been able to help other businesses. That's totally indifferent. And, um, you know, it, it's not aggressive. It's not salesy. It's, 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 it's very, you know, clear and to the point. Um, but you've got to go back to that close every time. Otherwise they're, if, if you just overcome that objection, you're just sitting there waiting for them to respond. Their, their natural reaction is going to be to say no at that point. Look, lady, I'm just here to set the appointments. I don't care that your husband's name's not on any of the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Little inside joke there for one of Kyle's accounts that we love so much. So that's it, man. I mean, that's what we talked about. And I told him, look, you know, we can, I, I, I want, I want you to kind of use some of these things for a few weeks and maybe I get with you next month and kind of follow up and see, 
you know, how things are going, what tweaks we need to make, but I think this is a good place to start. Again, I didn't want to overwhelm him. I didn't want to tell him he needed to go in and change, you know, everything that he was doing because I don't think that he did. I think we just needed to be um, a little bit more crisp on a couple things. And obviously it's, you know, it, it's had some pretty decent results over the past couple of weeks since we've talked because he's setting appointments left and right. And they're not, and they're not shit appointments like, like some of them were, um, you know, in the past. I think the next step is to get him – um, qualifying businesses so that, you know, he's not setting appointments for me with a two person landscaping right. company, but well, I mean, that, part that, of that happen, needs to happen on our end, right? hundred percent. Whatever gets to him. hundred percent. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit better job of that and make sure that, you know, I'm not putting stuff in there. That's just, um, you know, garbage cause garbage in garbage out. Right. So, um, but I think that would be the next step with him is, 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 is kind of working in something to his, his pitch where he's, you know, just confirming employees like, okay. And you know, um, you guys are what at like 10 employees now or something like that. You know, mm. he, just something we can throw in there because if they're, if they're not, I mean, there's very few times where there's going to be a company that has less than 10 employees where it's going to make sense for us to engage. Unless with. It's like big Al's Gator farm or something like that, where we got a little bit of meat to the rate. But I mean, no, I think the next step for us really let, I, I want him to stay in his lane, right? I, my job is not to make Marvin a true business development professional yeah. from beginning to end. Um, it's to keep him on the phones and setting appointments. So to true. me, the next stage of that game is either to take Grayson, if he's going to continue to show interest and have him dive Grayson's qualifying the- game has got to get beefed up, dude. It's hot. Gu- it's, well, he has none because I've told him I don't want him to but yeah. you know that's the next progression for him anyhow if i'm teaching him my process is sure now here's here are the other things you need to do with this um and if it's here's not a gonna link be to him, reference usa <laughs> yeah and if it's not him i'm gonna you know i'll go ahead and i'll bring in another va and have them do nothing but Qualifying. you know lead research and qualification yeah. right to, to build that back out you know especially with us getting to the point now where we're coming out of covid we need to do that, man. I mean, it's one thing if we're sitting around the office and people aren't willing to meet and we're only able to do so much. Um, you know, even though we wrote quite a bit of business during COVID, um, I, I only want to go out and actively go after those things that we want to be in front of from that standpoint. Everything else and, can just yeah. get dumped into that. Small that business. was the impact. You're like, you're right. I mean, the like, we still kept things moving, but. I wasn't able to go out and do the type of marketing and stuff that I would normally do and, and go after the accounts that I want to go after because of COVID. COVID's yep. so, so whack. So whack. Yeah. And so I think I think the thing is that now we can tighten that up a little bit, right? I agree. And, and so, you know, maybe even to the point where we don't want to discount and, and completely get rid of the small business because the carriers still want to be fed that small business. I mean, I don't know why. I think it's horrible, but whatever. Um So maybe we just automatically assign that to small business. Boom, boom, boom. We throw that into Nicole as soon as she gets her stuff Mm -hmm. up and running here. So Mm -hmm. um, I think that's I think that's the angle. But anyhow, dude, feel what was it again? (laughs) Feel felt found. Glad that really stuck with you. Yeah, uh, feel felt found. Power word. Then feel feel felt felt found. Pow. Pow. Feel felt found. And then back to the close, baby. That's it. In the face. <laughs> there you go. All right, Try good it deal. Out. Listen, it works. Yeah, listen. And by the way, for those of you that are picking yourselves up off the floor because that's the most you've ever heard Kyle talk on a single podcast, dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you more. Listen, I'm just I'm gonna start thinking of all of these things that he knows more about than I do, and I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. Yeah, I mean, listen. When we're talking water. about insure tech, the guy is dropping freaking just dropping nugget after nugget. Like nuggets just, are falling out of the beard today. <laughs> That's yeah. I mean, that's kind of gross, but no, dude. I mean, there's 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 things that I know about, and there's things that I don't. You know, and a lot of give them next week, man. I think we need to start doing this since we're doing two a week. We should do one that I'm really I really know a lot about, and one that you know a lot about. So, what's the next one going to be from you? What can we look forward to? I know a lot about like Call of Duty and bourbon and golf, dude. I mean. So we could do I'm that. Sure there's a lot of producers out there that would listen to that, and I would encourage. I'm them sure to do there so are. And, I'm and sure you have engage in that. Mad downloads. So that I can go out and call on your clients while you're partaking of those things, but 
Well, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm not. I do. Those are those are weekend things, and after Nash goes to sleep, things. So I, I'm it's not having an impact call, on my I'm just my work. Call you out right now. Disarming the gatekeeper next week. We're going to record disarming the gatekeeper. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I know you've got some skills there. Sure. And then I'm going to talk about some extremely complex InsureTech product that is going to solve all of the world's problems. Yeah, there you go. Something I'm going to have no contribution on and <laughs> just sit there and let you you and whoever our other guest is at that point talk about because... Well, no, it's shop talk. It's gonna No, be I know. I'm just saying that's, that's, how topic, it, that's how it currently goes because... Week, I can tell you. And you know what's messed yeah. up too is a lot of times I'm getting ready to ask some question about, about something. I'm like, ooh, this could apply. And then here goes David on a five-minute tangent about the same question I was about to ask. So I just, all right, I'm back here. Well, you guys yeah. just do your thing. So my favorite is, and this is exactly what we're going to talk about, why you need to put in a full submission, including accords, when taking an account over on agent a record letter. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we're out of here. Everybody have a good weekend. See ya. See ya. been listening to power producers shop talk you can follow us at the power producers podcast on facebook and instagram and if you want to take your game to the next level check out our commercial insurance training course at killingcommercial.com or visit amazon to pick up a copy of our international best-selling book the extra two minutes